This is the DJI Pocket 2 camera, and today I'm going to review it with the rest of the Creator Combo, but not as a webcam like I usually would. Instead, this time I use the camera away from my home office. Yes, they let me out, and in fact, I just returned from Europe using this as my primary motion camera, filming highlights of the trip. But before I get into the specs and accessories, let me just show you a few captures from the Pocket 2. So, I recorded a few shots in the bright sunlight, and this footage is from a small island village in St. Martin on the Isle of Ray in France. Now, that's the main square, and this one shows the three-axis gimbal image stabilization in a side street while walking normally. And these are just a few selfie shots, first in moderate lighting, then in intense sunlight, just to see what those look like. And I'll get to that big wireless microphone in a moment. But here's some footage from Santiago in Spain with a few more colors and a bit more shade and backlighting of buildings. And since smaller sensor cameras tend to struggle in lower light situations, here's a little footage that I captured in an overcast day in Portugal. Now let's take the light level down another notch. And these are some interior shots back in Spain at the famous Santiago de Compostela Cathedral. So now you have an idea of the images this little camera can achieve. Let me go into the detail about the camera itself. Then I'm gonna walk through the extras that you get from the Creator Combo. So the DJI Pocket 2 released in 2020 and is still arguably the best in its class. Right now for around $350, you can get this handheld camera which is about five inches tall and one and a half inches wide and deep. That's 125 millimeters by 38 millimeters if you live in a country with logical measurements. And it also weighs only four ounces or 116 grams, so it's super light. Now the highlight of this camera is it's small but smooth three axis gimbal for stabilization without the need for a jib, wheels of any kind, or amazing skateboarding skills while you're filming. And you can use the primary control module, which is called the mini control stick, to control the gimbal or zoom in and out. Then, next to the record button is a function button that lets you recenter your shot with two presses. Or, as you can see here, with three presses, it will flip the camera quickly into selfie mode or flip it back. Now, the camera itself uses a 3 fifths inch sensor or 1 over 1.7 inch, which is capable of 64 megapixels or 9216 by 6912 pixels. So for video, it shoots up to 4K at 60 frames all the way down to 1080p at 24 frames with options for 24, 25, 30, 48, 52, and 60 FPS. Now the lens is distortion corrected and has a 93 degree field of view. It supports HDR, time-lapse, motion-lapse, and hyper-lapse, and records video as MP4 files to a removable micro SD card, which is easily accessed from the outside of the camera. Now the audio story is also good natively with a stereo four microphone array that automatically adjusts based on the camera's orientation. Now here's what the microphone sounds like natively. So we're at the Tower of Hercules right now. And I'll get to the wireless microphone in the Creator Combo in a second. Its little LCD screen is sharp and supports touch gestures to configure the camera and its attached accessories. It's so small though that you can't really use it like a smartphone display to check focus. You just have to have faith in the sensor and the camera's autofocus. Its internal non-replaceable battery will run about 140 minutes and I can attest to this claim because I didn't need to charge it in over two weeks of intermittent use. And by the way, it charges over its included USB-C cable, but you'll need to provide a USB wall charger for it. It also includes a wrist strap, a pressure fit hard shell cover to avoid scratches, and the cover has positions in it as well to store two included smartphone adapter modules for both iPhone using a lightning plug and Android using USB-C. In fact, you need a smartphone to set the camera up with the DJI Mimo app. So for iOS, you can download it from the App Store, but for Android, it's not on Google Play for some reason, and you need to download the APK file from DJI's website and manually install it, therefore bypassing the security of your device. You know, as someone who's worked in IT security and also device management roles, this doesn't feel particularly secure on Android, 
And it also means you won't get automatic updates from the Play Store on Android as well. So thumbs down for that decision. Now, also in my case, I was unable to install a firmware update for the camera using the DJI MIMO Android app, but oddly it worked just fine over iOS. So that's two strikes then for Android users. So that's the camera itself. Now for another $150 or about $500 in total, you can get the creator combo. Now the main difference between the standalone camera and the combo is that you get the wireless microphone, its companion do-it-all handle, along with a removable windscreen or what many would call a dead cat. So let me give you a taste of what the wireless microphone sounds like from a windy island town in France. All right, so we're on the DJI Pocket 2 again with a pretty windy condition here. I've got this microphone attached to me and it's, yeah, got the dead cat on it. And once you get past its massive size of clipped to your collar, making you look a little bit like the great Doug DeMuro, it does a pretty good job with natural audio capture and wind resistance using the dead cat. Now to get all this to work, you need to charge the microphone and attach the handle to the base of the camera. The do it all handle is a bit overnamed in my opinion. It doesn't really do it all like it, the name suggests. From what I can tell, it adds a wireless radio for audio to microphone and data to smartphone transmission. And you can also use it to attach a more discreet wired lavalier microphone over its 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which by the way, works with both TRS and TRRS microphones. So thumbs up for that level of microphone flexibility. Now, finally, the handle makes the camera tripod mountable using a standard quarter 20 threaded tripod mount. The combo also includes a compact tripod mount base and a tiny foldable tripod for positioning on a flat level surface. And finally, you get a wide angle lens that magnetically attaches as an additional lens to the camera and it extends the field of view from 93 degrees to 110 degrees. Now I recommend using this for selfie videos if you're not using a selfie stick or the extender accessory that you can buy so that it gets a little bit more of your shoulders and torso in the frame. A selfie stick would also limit you in terms of using the image, recenter, and flip controls with the function button, as well as zoom or gimbal controls using the joystick. So that leaves the big question then. So is the $150 that you'd need to spend for the creator kit worth it? Well, I think so. So if you plan to use the camera outside and record audio, the wireless microphone is nice to have. Now, if you buy all the accessories separately, they would go for about $250 total. And if you have a problem with the size of the wireless microphone, like I did, I wouldn't blame you. It's very noticeable on camera. So if you do need an external microphone, you could get away with just the camera only option, then buy the do it all handle, which is about hundred dollars and add your own wired lapel microphone. Now I haven't tested this configuration myself, but I do have a few good ones in 3.5 millimeters from Shure and Deity, or you could go all out with a Senken COS 11D microphone, which will probably cost you as much as the camera, but it's going to sound amazing. Now the mini tripod and wide angle lens, in my opinion, doesn't add a ton of value and you can also shoot selfies without it, but you can get first and third party ND filters, which I think would come in handy for outdoor filming. You know, I wish I actually had purchased those filters for my trip to Europe, to be honest. Now for my overall thoughts on the camera, First, what I really like about it is the image quality. That's pretty amazing. You know, it's crazy what a step from two fifths inch of a camera sensor can make when you when you compare it to webcams like the Obspot webcams that I like and also the Makose 4K camera that I have to the three fifths sensor that's in the DJI Pocket 2. Of course, compared to a full size mirrorless camera with detachable lenses, you're giving up things like low aperture cinematic looking shots with a shallow depth of field, things like ease of adjustment for your ISO or uh, other settings. But if you're a fan of auto settings and point and shoot style filming or photography, this little camera is ideal and the built-in gimbal really helps ensure that all of your shots are smooth, even if you're walking with it. So it works well also in various lighting conditions, unlike some of the action cameras out there. 
that basically need to have daylight to work well. And the sound quality with the built-in microphones or the wireless microphone is pretty stellar. It's an amazing camera that's better than what's in even the best smartphones today. And it looks about as stealth or arguably even more stealth than a smartphone when you're using it out in the public. Plus you don't need to worry about filling up your phone's onboard storage or draining its battery or any distractions popping up on the screen while you're recording. Now what I do wish was better on the DJI Pocket 2 is that first, I'm not a fan of the experience for Android users. So the app that's hosted outside of the Google Play Store is pretty sketchy in my opinion. The firmware updates failing uh, made that even worse. And I get that many creators use Apple products, but Android actually has a larger market share. So for me, it doesn't make sense. Also, I wish that there were native experiences for PC or Mac. Now you can't move image files or video files over USB-C directly to a computer. It only works that way for mobile phones. So if you're stuck without an SD card reader like I was, by the way, in Europe, the only thing that I could do was transfer the media to my phone, then from my phone over USB-C to my laptop. So it's too dependent on smartphones, in my opinion, as if that's going to be the main device where post-production is going to be done against the videos that it films. Maybe that's true for some people, but there should be a way, in my opinion, to have the camera appear as a storage drive. And you know, micro SD cards are so tiny, they're pretty easy to drop or get mixed up with other micro SD cards that you have. And they're also easy to lose while you're, especially while you're away from home or the office. Then there's this microphone here, and I wish that the wireless microphone was about a quarter of its current size or less. Now. The wireless microphone itself does have a 3.5 millimeter jack on top that you can see there, but you know, another wired microphone is something else that you need to carry and doesn't really make sense if you're filming solo. The microphone could be a lot smaller than this. And the last thing that I wish the camera could do is operate as a USB webcam for PC and Mac. Even if it needed to drop its maximum resolution to 4K 30, I think it would blow away even the best webcams out there. Now granted, I still need to test the Insta360 Link, but the Pocket 2 has a slightly larger image sensor, a wider field of view, and excellent onboard microphone, so it would likely blow it away, but I'll need to test that out to see if that's really the case. That said, I don't think that any of these nitpicks or improvement ideas are deal breakers though, and I would still recommend this camera at $350 and would say to go with the Creator Combo at $500 if you can. Now I'd also recommend buying a third party carrying case made specifically for the Pocket 2 Creator Combo. I have one on the way from MaxCam that looks compact, but with enough extra room to fit a few other accessories like ND filters or an SD card reader. So the DJI Pocket 2 gets a yes from me and was a great compact vacation camera. So if this was helpful for you, don't forget to tap the like button. If you really hated it, tap that dislike button. <laughs> you made it this far, so you probably have some pretty strong opinions either way. So to see a lot more camera stuff, be sure to watch my previous videos, subscribe for new ones as well, along with a few related tech tips. And as always, thank you so much for watching.